This is KGW News at Sunrise. He loved to love. And that was his purpose in life, was to love people and make them laugh. That woman is remembering her son, who was shot and killed while sitting inside his car earlier this month. His death marks the 37th homicide in Portland this year. And this morning, her plea to Portlanders. Also, an update on the landslide that washed out a highway near the Mount St. Helens Observatory. Tourists had to be rescued, but they also had to leave their cars behind. When they could get them back, plus more on the road repairs. We also want to let you know that summer officially arrives today. In fact, it's about three hours away. The official start time of the season, 7.57 a.m. Our time as we take this live look at downtown Portland from our Wells Fargo Skycam. Brenda, Christine in the studio right now. Chris McGinnis standing by there for a look at your traffic. But first, how about this? In honor of the first day of summer, <laughs> we have Rod Hill out there yeah. at a local swimming pool. Rod, where are you exactly? Yeah, we're in uh, Southeast Portland. This is behind me, Creston Pool. Of course, the first day of summer, traditionally the first day of Portland uh, parks opening up all of the city's pools. So we assume that water will be filled with kids splashing a little bit later today. It's really a beautiful morning. Let's get you going out the door with your forecast. We're mainly clear right now, at least over downtown Portland. Now it is a chilly star. A lot of you are in the 40s. You can see downtown Portland sitting at 50 degrees right now. Here comes your planner. The rain chances are over, so a sunny, beautiful way to kick off our new season. 65 at noon, we'll get up to about 77 for a high. Here's Chris McGinnis checking the roads. Hard to top that, but we'll try the morning drive off to a pretty good start. Quick look at the Banfield. This is out near 28th Avenue. Your inbound commute heading that way into downtown. That looks pretty good. We'll switch gears and take you up to Clark County. Uh, it's moving. I promise the camera's stuck, but I-205 southbound here on the right-hand side of your screen, your SR500. We're in pretty good shape on that side of town. Brenda, no crashes, no unexpected delays on the roads just yet. All right, Chris, thank you. Now to our top story this morning. We have learned the two women killed near a music festival in Washington over the weekend were from Seattle and they were engaged to be married. Jocelyn Ruiz and Brandy Escamilla were shot at a campground near the Beyond Wonderland Festival at the Gorge Amphitheater. Ruiz's family shared these pictures of her. According to the family's lawyer, the two women did not know the accused gunman. Our sister station in Seattle spoke to another victim who was shot in the shoulder. A guy pops behind a tent and points his gun at me. Uh, he shoots me once. And then the moment he shot me, survival instincts kicked in and uh, I jumped behind one of my friend's tents. And then I ran and he chased me and was shooting at me. And uh, as he was shooting at me, I, there was bullets whizzing by me. The Grant County Sheriff's Office identified the suspected shooter as 26-year-old James Kelly. So far, investigators haven't released a possible motive, but he was stationed at Joint Base Lewis McCord. Kelly is in jail this morning, but he has not formally been charged. He was also treated for a gunshot wound after deputies shot him. Now to a mother's plea for help. Her son, Dominic Sawyer, is Portland's latest homicide victim. Police say 29-year-old, the 29-year-old rather, was murdered June 10th. It happened just before 2 a.m. at Southwest 3rd and Harvey Milk. Two other people who were shot survived. Dominic's mom, Sherish, says her son was sitting in his car when someone shot and killed him. She asked that we not show her face. She's desperate for answers and wants police to find Dominic's killer. You know, somebody saw the shooter. Somebody did. I want to see the person that killed my son and looked him in the eyes and let them know what they took from hundreds of people. Dominic left behind three young children. His death marks the 37th homicide in Portland this year. If you have any information on the case, call Portland Police. We've posted more detailed information on our website, kgw.com. Meanwhile, Oregon State Police are looking for the four people who damaged the Hasita Head Lighthouse in Florence, one of the most historic landmarks along the Oregon coast. Last, four, uh, last Thursday, those four people were caught on camera at the lighthouse building. Two of them broke a window and tried to get in. One of the buildings and some signs were also spray painted. The lighthouse started operating back in 1864 and the damage from last Thursday 
is estimated to stand somewhere between $10,000 and $20,000. If you recognize any of those four people from these surveillance photos, you're asked to call Oregon State Police. We have an update on the highway that was washed out by a landslide near Mount St. Helens last month. Both state and federal officials say repair work could begin as soon as this month. Yeah, and that is good news for people whose cars are still stranded up there. Mm -hmm. Devin Haskins is live with us this morning. So Devin, what can you tell us about this plan to fix the highway? Yeah, Christine, you may remember several cars were left stranded at the observatory after the road washed away. Now the plan is to build a road to help recover them. Officials at WSDOT say they are finalizing a contract that would start work by the end of this month. Crews will then start clearing the debris that washed down the hill and also focus on making sure the hillside stabilized. Then they'll build a temporary one lane road that would be used, among other things, to get the seven stranded car owners or cars rather back to their owners. Washdot says it hopes to have that work finished by early August. I talked with Brian Crandall and Tim Euler after the slide happened. Both have a car stranded up there. Crandall at the time had just bought his car a few weeks prior and hadn't even made a car payment on his 2021 Toyota RAV4. For him, it's even more of a reason to get it back. I caught up with both of them yesterday about the thought of getting their cars back, hopefully later this summer. Having my car back, especially because I also do DoorDash Uber Eats, um, so it was part of my job let alone the photography that I'm trying to do, um, it is monumental to have my car back throughout all that. <laughs> when it's all said and done, it will have just been a minor inconvenience. It's really not a big deal in the scheme of things, but it is kind of at that point where it's like, oh, I would have loved to have done this, but I can't because I don't have the car, so. All right, so when that temporary road gets built, it will not be open to the public. It'll only be used to clear the debris and get those cars back. We still don't know. We don't have a timeline for when the highway will get completely repaired. Guys, back to you. All right, Devin Haskins reporting for us this morning live in our studio. Meanwhile, live outside this morning, there he is, Rodney Hill, standing next to a body of man-made water. <laughs> uh, Rod, it's the first day of summer. Fill us in again on where you are. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a, a beautiful day today. You know, we had the needed rain back on Father's Day, Monday. Yesterday, the airport actually didn't pick up any rain. It turned out to be a pretty dry day. And now we have mainly clear skies up top for much of the Lama Valley. And summer will be a sunny 70-something start to the new season. The pool is beautiful. Camera Eric out here with me. You know, I've been here before. And if you uh, look on the left, you see the grass right there. Typically, they'll bring out... Uh, tables and loungers. Uh, so it's really a, a great comfortable spot for mom and dad if you don't need to be in the water with your uh, little ones. Again, Portland Public Schools, uh, schools, Portland Public <laughs> Parks and Rec opening up the pools today. All right, let's get you to the weather. I mentioned it's going to be a beautiful day. Here's a satellite picture. A little bit of cloudiness up around Kelso Longview dropping down from the south, but otherwise this is going to be a mainly sunny day. Uh, across our region and the winds expected to be light too. So the summer season, the solstice, 757 this morning local time. Now so far we hit 95 times in May. That was a record. We've done it once, a 92 degree day earlier this month. So the total is sitting at six. And if you're wondering about the summer now that it's coming up on us, right now the weather models show no hot weather all the way through the July 4th weekend, meaning no 90s or certainly nothing well up into the 90s. Uh, the forecast projections, 20 or more 90 degree days, and typically we would hit 90. Well, maybe not typically, but we certainly can do it well into the month of September. So we'll see what the summer season brings us. All right, here's a look. A little hazy out from the uh, Wells Fargo camera. I can tell you here where we are, if I look up, it appears to be a baby blue sky up top. Temperatures are cool, so there could be some shallow fog pockets starting to develop as well. It's 50 out at the airport, but... A lot of you are in the 40s. In fact, 46 now up in Kelso, 47 down in Salem. It's uh, freezing out in Burns. That's a cold start to summer. And at 27, of course, still spring right now, 31 out in Baker City. All right, forecast numbers are all good ones. This shows Corvallis could get up to 80. Salem, 79 today. Summer begins. The northwest winds just 5 to 15 at most. Mainly sunny after some cloudiness and early morning shallow fog pockets around. A similar scene up north. Again, Longview has some cloudiness right now, but that will thin out quickly. 76 year expected high temperature. And here's the seven day. Still looks like uh, 77 today for Portland, about normal for the first day of summer. 85 tomorrow. I have taken out the rain chance on Friday. 
I am still looking at the chance we'll see a scattered or isolated storm pop Sunday. The best chance of rain on the seven day right now is Monday and enough cloudiness and rain around to lower temperatures uh, into the 70s. You know, I, I had a coat, but it's uh, it's really not that bad out. Despite the fact it's 50 degrees, it's a beautiful morning. Summer just uh, a little over a couple hours away, guys. Back to you. I know. Hard to believe it's already here. OK, thanks, Rod. So where Rod is right now, Creston Pool, it's going to be one of all the outdoor public pools that will be open today through August 27th. Each one will be hosting a weekly free swim session. We've got the dates, hours there on your screen. This is all a part of Portland Parks and Rec's summer free for all series. We've got more details at KGW.com where we've posted an article with the full calendar of all the summer free for all events. Also coming up this morning here on Sunrise, it is, is it a sign of hope in the North Atlantic? Crews searching for five adventure tourists on a trip to see the Titanic say they've picked up some underwater noises. The clock is ticking because the group's missing submersible is running out of air. We'll have an update on all of that after the break.